Welcome into this Telstra virtual event. I'm Justin Cleveland. And before we get started, I do want to let you know what you can do on the platform. You can resize the boxes. Uh, you can move them around uh, to your liking just so you, you get the configuration the way you like it. Additionally, along the bottom of the screen, you'll see some uh, boxes for resources where you can download a copy of today's presentation and engage in the conversation via the Twitter and chat boxes. And we really do want to hear from you, so please ask questions at any point during today's conversation. Uh, now, phones, tablets, they're all ubiquitous in the home. In fact, there are over, uh, according to one study I read, 2 billion smartphone users in the world. And that's a number that continues to grow. In fact, 44% of Americans are so addicted to their devices that they use it while watching TV, uh, something I'm not going to lie, I'm guilty of as well. Uh, so while connected devices are very common in the home, it's so common, in fact, that our kids are better at using them than we are, their adoption in the workplace is scattered at best. Some of us are reluctant to give up on the familiarity of a PC. Others are happy with their own apps and don't want to learn a new ecosystem. Others still might want to use a technology that may not be supported by the corporate network. It, we as, as workers are, are always... always looking for new ways to collaborate, uh, ways to be more productive, and just do our jobs better. That's why it's important to have a strategy, not only for introducing devices into your office, but for helping to get everyone on board. Specifically, uh, we'll talk today about the strategy that we've used at Telstra. And while, yes, we are a big company, uh, we're also divided in by units that operate fairly independently. And our experiences, both successes and challenges, will hopefully help you define your own strategy. So today, we will be talking about the strategy, but also the different ways that you can integrate technology into your office. Uh, let me uh, introduce my first guest. It is Brett Southey, he's the General Manager for Enterprise, Enterprise Collaboration at Telstra. Uh, good afternoon, Brett. Good afternoon. Uh, also right. joining me here in Sydney is Jane Gordon, who led the charge for implementing a mobile reform strategy at Telstra's 400 George Street facility. Uh, good afternoon, Jane. Good afternoon, Justin. Uh, and from Wise Employment, with a variety of experiences in technology and change management, is Mark Havel. Uh, welcome to the call, Mark. Uh, Mick. Yes, it's Mick. It's Mick. Good, good afternoon, Justin. <laughs> so, uh, now, this isn't going to be a lecture today, uh, but a conversation, and I do encourage you to join us. Uh, let us know what you were thinking. Um, just about anything uh, is, is on the table, so do let us know what you were thinking about, and we want to have a conversation with you. Uh, and I want to start with the first question, actually, to you in the audience. You'll see a polling box uh, up here on your screen right now. Uh, do you allow employees to use their own devices on your company network? No, we don't allow it. Uh, no, we issue mobile devices. Yes, we have access to email and calendar. And yes, there's uh, full access to the company network via apps and via VPN. Uh, let me go ahead and, uh, before we uh, uh, pull the uh, audience questions, Mick, what do you do in your office? Well, <laughs> we have a mixture. We, we allow smartphones to, to connect in for calendar, Outlook, uh, mail, that sort of stuff. Uh, but uh, other PC type devices we don't allow, tablets we don't allow in. Uh, however, as you know, uh, we actually do have a, uh, a very well connected 4G uh, tablet environment that we've rolled out for everybody in our organization. So, uh, oh, okay. So we, we've created that environment for them. Right, so you're in the process of basically getting ahead to a fully incorporated strategy. That's right. Great. It will lead to BYOD in the end. Well, it sounds like you're, you're, uh, the point you're at with your business is that point uh, that our audience is with as well. You know, yes, email and calendar, I think those are functions that we've experienced you know, from the BlackBerry era over the last 10 years up to now. It's pretty simple and straightforward, um, but we also want uh, to look toward uh, full, more full integration, uh, and that's actually what we'll be talking about today. Uh, so let's get started and talk about the people at Telstra uh, that we were appealing to, because ultimately, no matter what your strategy is, you have to appeal to the people. Uh, and let's talk about what the, what people were looking for. Absolutely. So I think w one one thing when when Telstra first started on our journey, and it, and it very much centres around our people and our culture and making our business more productive and more effective. We spent a lot of time understanding what were some of the pain points in our organisation, what were some of the experience challenges that our staff and our the partners that Telstra works with were actually achieving. And, and a lot of great research went into uh, understanding some of the big emotional drivers as well as some of the financial drivers behind this strategy that we'll, we'll talk a bit more about today. Um, but very much, you know, the word collaborative, you know, the ability to collaborate and actually work more effectively 
um, the flexibility of, of being able to work more flexibly the way it suits my lifestyle, the way it suits my job, the way it suits my need. Um, you know, it was centered at the heart of a lot of what we've actually done. Um, the ability to be more agile in terms of business processes and changing how we actually function, um, again, came up as, as some really big drivers. Um, and ultimately, where we came to was, was working out how we enable a lot of new capabilities into our organization, how we make things a little bit simpler to access, and how we provide great digital tools to help people be more effective. And, and that very much led into a, a program of work that we call Future Ways of Working internally, which is really the vehicle to help us drive out a lot of this change across the organization. So, Jane, you, you kind of uh, spearheaded this, particularly here at the George Street location. Um, take us through, I mean, what, where do we start looking at, at, at reforming our workforce? So, for us, for us, Justin, it was about us looking um, inwards and saying, what do we want as a company? And we actually formulated a vision um, of how we wanted to be operating in the coming years. So just to share with you our vision, we wanted to become leaders in personal productivity and collaboration um, through living our core values, um, unleashing our team's talents, and really being able to showcase the market-leading technologies um, so that we can deliver better outcomes for our customers. Um, the way that we have um, achieved this is, I suppose, through three key pillars that we identified. Um, and all of these are equally important, so I won't start in any particular order, but I mean, p uh, people and, and driving new practices into the way we work is, is essential. And this is supported through the introduction, as Brent says, of new technology, which really supports our people with the tools that they need to enable them to do their jobs. And, and really, um, the, the next part is the workplace. So that's about providing our people with a, with a place that's inspiring, where they can um, choose uh, to, to work in a different variety of settings, depending on the type of work that they're actually doing, um, you know, for a whole day or even during periods of the day. So what we felt was this would enable greater integration of, of our people and our technology and provide choice in the way we work. And really what this leads to is being able to drive some really key business outcomes. We can absolutely showcase the technology. We improve the collaboration of our people in, this, in the space, whether they be in the office or, or working out of the office. Um, we see, we've seen an increase in, pers in productivity and our ability to attract and retain talent through the, the innovation in our, in our workspaces and our technology and um, a reduction in our environmental impact. Mm -hmm. Now, Mick, you've got uh, people that are scattered all over, uh, just all over. Uh, you have to appeal to those individuals and get them all on board. Um, from that change management perspective, how do, you, how do you get people to start thinking about changing the way that they work? Well, for us, actually, it was a very large cultural change for them. And uh, we actually were, were more apprehensive and, and concerned than the way it actually turned out to be. Our, actually, our staff, when we started to pilot this, actually became very engaged, very energized by the whole experience of being completely mobile uh, at all times. So yeah, we, we can attest to the, the benefits that, that you're talking about here in terms of that productivity, the engagement uh, of our staff and so on. Uh, and really, the <coughs> there was a little bit of concern and fear about what about new technologies that some of our old older staff members were, were going to be facing. The reality was that within a, an hour or two, they were up and running at speed and experimenting with, with new features that they'd never even thought about be before. So, uh, so, so that it, it was actually far, far less resistance than, than we were predicting. And, uh, and that was a kind of a surprise for the project team. Yeah, and I, I honestly think once you, you get people used to using something new, and listen, I, I mean, I walk down the street and I see the Apple iPhone 6 ads all over the place. If you give me the promise of getting the latest and greatest, and uh, you know, I can use it at home and I can use it at work, it seems like there's that, that initial resistance, that initial hesitation is going to go down. But there's also the concern about, I mean, purely technology, um, not wanting to learn something new. Um, even if I've got the latest and greatest, figuring out the best way to use it sounds like a challenge. It, it certainly is from a Telstra perspective, and we've tried to take our uh, staff on a journey, um, and we've achieved this through setting up some foundations for our future. And the first one aligns, uh, Justin, very much with what you were mentioning around you know, access to the latest and greatest technology. We have um, put in place um, what we call a Staff Connect plan, which is a specific staff plan that is, is based on uh, one of our consumer plans. 
um, enabling all our staff access to this. It's based on our BYOD policy and underlying that we use our mobile device management platform, allowing our um, staff to um, use their smartphone as a tool of trade and to be able to access business-specific applications. Mm -hmm. Now, we're in, uh, in Telstra, we are, uh, we're in a weird mixed position where some of our staff are out working remote, but uh, we have centers where people come. Uh, so how do you balance that out and uh, so that people just don't say, well, you gave me this new shiny thing, that's fantastic, but, you know, I've also got my PC and my desk and I can just, you know, continue to work the way I've always worked? So I suppose that's an evolving journey. Um, in terms of smartphones, that is uh, available to all of our staff, whether they be out in, in the field or in office locations. Um, we're also looking in the future, and Brent will touch on this shortly in, in the rest of the presentation, around our policy going forward around BYOD uh, devices, not, not just phones, but tablets and computers. Right, so what does BYOD mean? I know what BYO means when I go out to, <laughs> to dinner, but, you know. Um, BYOD is, is, is essentially, you know, bring your own device. Uh, whether you're so used to having these um, devices in your personal life, in, in your front room, it's really beginning to bring that together into, into an experience that you share at work. So it can, it can be um, a, a smartphone, and we do allow people who don't want to take out the Staff Connect plan to bring their own device and install the mobile device management to be able to use that as a tool of trade, um, regardless of the plan. So really, it's just extending that through other devices and ensuring, um, you know, through that that they are able to continue working on on the latest and greatest technology. Yeah. At one point, um, oh, ten years ago or so now, uh, I, I had my own personal flip mobile phone, I had my work mobile phone, I had uh, a pager for work, and I had an emergency pager yes. uh, that connected to a different system. So I was walking down the street, you know, strapped up. It sounds like you want to uh, start building against that. Absolutely, and what we're actually encouraging our staff to do by taking the Staff Connect plan is, is to centralize on one device. This device can be your home device, your work device. It, you can connect um, as and when you as and when you need to, and as and when you want to. So removing the need for multiple devices for different facets of your life. Yeah, uh, I want to jump ahead because I think Wi-Fi technology makes sense. People understand that conceptually, but let's talk about the flexible work because we're not just talking about remote working. You know, where you go home and you just work from home. Which, what what exactly do you mean when you say flexible work? So for us in Telstra, flex, flexible work has uh, many meanings. We are very fortunate to have a policy uh, where all roles are considered to be uh, flexible and that gives us the right to have a conversation with our management around um, what flexibility means to us. Um, so this could be uh, the location from where you work, the days of the week you work or the hours you work in a day. Um, this also means that we, we can uh, support our staff in, in working um, with a consistent set of tools wherever you may be, mm -hmm. whether that be in the office, from your home, from a customer site, or really from a cafe or a park. Right. Well, I, I just the other day I was uh, I, I left the office about 5:30 on Friday, thinking it was safe to leave the office 5:30 on Friday, but got a call from somebody that I've been trying to figure something out with. Finally got it figured out. So on the train, I'm, I'm dealing with them. Uh, by the time I get off, I'm walking to the park. I'm signing something through DocuSign. So you know, it was it was really convenient to have that all on my mobile device. Absolutely, absolutely, and and we are seeing that more and more. And, and uh, you know, Telstra is very supportive of, of uh, enabling a work-life balance. Um, and I think the access to technology on your devices certainly enables that. Yeah, and let's talk about this in terms of um, the benefits, because you know we can talk so we're blue in the face about making employees happy, but ultimately, if it's going to cost us a ton of money, it's not something that's going to be an easy sell to anyone who has to sign that check. Absolutely, um, and this is certainly a journey that we've been on internally within Telstra. So the way we've um, looked at this is that there are some clearly quantifiable financial benefits, and there are some non-financial benefits um, today, which we're hoping over time we'll, we'll be able to work towards quantifying more clearly. So from a financial perspective, we expect in the medium to long term to see some reduction in um, lease expenses on our properties um, in, in different um, areas. Um, but as I say, that will be a more of a medium to long term proposition. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that we are seeing almost immediately is um, a reduction in operational costs. What does that mean? So re that, what that means is um, in moving to um, a new environment, um, we're seeing a vast reduction in printing because people are, are now um, 
supported by their mobile devices, mm. um, actually thinking about what it is they print and, and where they're actually going to put that information. Right. Whether they need to. I Absolutely, mean. yeah. It begins. It becomes a real question in their mind. And the other uh, thing that we have found that has been enabled through future ways of working is as a result of integration of technology into our physical workspaces through video conferencing, um, soft phones and video on, on um, devices, uh, we're seeing um, a reduction in travel costs as people feel visually connected through these yeah. technologies. I'll tell you, I have the, uh, the video phone at my desk at work, but I also have a Polycom app on my phone that I can dial in to the VMR very quick and easily, uh, and it's like I'm still there with the team, which is very, very nice. Absolutely, and, and, and the times when you have actually haven't met a person mm -hmm. uh, face to face, but you feel you have, and when yeah. you actually meet them for the first time, it has happened today. <laughs> Jane and I had talked on the on the phone via video phone, and it was great. And then she walked in the room, it's like, oh yes, I know this person. It's not a oh, I'm meeting a stranger. Absolutely, yeah. and I think I think uh, those are there's you know intangible benefits to that yeah. as well. That's it. I still haven't met uh, uh, Brent, uh, Mick, or Fiona who are, are, are in uh, Melbourne there, but I feel like I know them because I've, I've done enough video conferencing with them. It, it's a weird feeling, frankly. Mm -hmm. So yeah, some just, of the I mean, just as one of the other tangibles as we, we step in, so Jay mentioned some great examples there. We, we've literally seen a 600% increase in the use of video calls. Um, through the Future Ways of Working right. program, directly correlating to reducing the cost of paying for teleconference link numbers and, and those sorts of things to enable better experiences. I can see you, I can share content with you, we can mm -hmm. actually have a real virtual meeting, um, literally from any device anywhere. And the feedback we're getting from our employees is, wow, that's fantastic. I feel like I can attend that meeting from home. I yeah. can connect with you. So there's a huge, huge amount of internal employee satisfaction coming through from just having that increased flexibility and that ability to connect with people more more closely. Yeah, you know, I can have a sick kid and I can still dial into the meeting. You know, I'm taking care of what needs to be taken care of, but also this meeting was very important and it's, it's important that I do that. And that just reduces the stress in my life uh, and I'm able to do everything, which is kind of weird. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about uh, the mobile aspect of this because primarily we're talking about tablets and connected devices, you know, tablets, mobile phones at this moment. Um, but that's only a part of it because ultimately if you have a shiny device that doesn't do what you need it to do, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but let's talk about things in terms of the mobiles. So, so I think um, it's, it's a great, great launching of the conversation. I mean, when we started looking at the underlying strategy to enable this, um, you know, there, there's a few key sort of things that went through our mind. One is, one is the actual technology trends. Justin, you mentioned earlier you've got about three personal devices that you love using. I saw a tweet last week which was fantastic. It said, you know, things I'm least willing to compromise in life. You know, my religion, my sports team, and my preferred mobile device. <laughs> and we, have, we have close to religious wars between Android and iOS users, and this is, this is their personal devices and their personal preferences or devices. So it's a real passion point for people. There's nothing like going into an organization where you're constrained by having to use something that you don't want to use in your personal life. So considering those trends is where we do start thinking about, you know, what are the devices we physically give our people as a tool of trade as part of being employed by our business? And bring your own device, you know, let you use a device that you love using, that you use for your personal life and get real work benefit out of as well. Um, we've talked about the cultural aspects of that and, and what we're trying to enable for our employees and, and the ways we work and, and the flexibility of work. Um, but ultimately, we're doing this to get business results. <laughs> We're not just doing so it's it to not be about nice. the device itself. It's actually about what you can do with it and how's that going to make you more productive. How's mm -hmm. it going to make your business more more profitable, um, and how's it going to reduce costs? Very very simplistically, it does come down to real financials, and that's been at the heart of where we're thinking about the mobile strategy. Is how do we do that? What are the foundations that we put in place um, to enable that? Um, so when we think about what we're doing on it, we started with the BYD concepts and what is our device strategy. We very heavily thought about the apps. You know, what are those apps that are actually going to change processes that are going to take our costs to actually increase revenue? Um, we very heavily focused around the collaboration tools. Um, so Telstra, obviously, we're of a scale and diversity of our workforce, which um, which is you know, more complex than some. But at the same time, the challenges are the same. We work with knowledge. We work with documents, we work with processes, and we have to basically make those easy to access yeah. for our people and make them more effectively. Well, you know, ultimately, so we, look at your, your employees are going to find a way to do what they want to do, and if you're not providing them the proper avenue, you know, I'm going to use perhaps Google Drive, which is maybe less secure than Box, 
Um, and you know, I'm still going to find a way to do this this file sharing because I don't I can't send someone a 20 megabyte file. Absolutely, uh, that's a great point. So the the reality is, in in businesses, consumer tools which you you may not be comfortable with, which might not have the right security. Um, and might actually put you at genuine risk because they're already in the workforce. So a big part of our strategy is getting on the front foot and actually pro proactively giving our employees those same experiences but making sure they're also secure and meet our business needs. Yeah. Um, the last sort of big component though is how do we do this uh, with, with a way of managing it and a cost structure that doesn't mean we've got massive IT investment every single time there's a new thing we want to do or enable. And that's a huge challenge for any business, regardless of your size and scale. Um, you know, we've heavily focused around cloud first and software as a service. And where we've built tools, making sure we use products and softwares that makes it lower cost and a lot easier to maintain relevant and current features um, in these platforms. And that's been the heart of how we focused on the actual underlying technology strategy. So as we get into the meat of it, um, really there's four key concepts that we think about in terms of our employee base. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, Brett, before we get into that, I, I do want to jump into the audience uh, real quick. And, and because we've been somewhat evangelizing here about the benefits of, uh, of mobile technologies and apps, and I want to know, uh, do you really believe that uh, giving someone an iPhone with the proper app is going to actually increase or improve productivity? Uh, yes, it will significantly impact it. Uh, yes, it will marginally improve it. Uh, no, but not, I mean, it's not going to be the worst thing in the world. Or no, it's going to be terrible because everybody's just going to be playing Angry Birds all day. Uh, so let us know what you think here. Uh, and Mick, you're obviously going through this strategy right now. Um, you have to come out with a perspective of, uh, you know, wins and losses, benefits and drawbacks for you. Uh, how do you see it working out? Absolutely. Well, I, I, I would quite happily tick the top box there. Yes, significantly improve. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at a business case now which I'm expecting uh, our sales team to become four times more effective through, a, through a, an app which will help them do that, that work uh, and not, not constrain the way they do it, not be a burden to them. <coughs> so not a simple CRM. And... Uh, but something, so it's about that user experience, about making that interaction with the, with the customer a lot more, a lot better, a lot more, uh, a lot quicker in terms of, of getting results, and, and almost clinching the deal before they walk out the door. Uh, yeah, so, uh, a question come in from Jenny. Uh, what apps are you using? Actually, we're going to get into that in a little bit of specifics in just a minute. And I also want to remind you, as we get the uh, poll results in here, uh, please ask us questions at any point during the uh, conversation. We are very happy to hear from you, uh, and want, and in fact, really want to hear from you. Uh, and sorry, Mick, I, I cut you off there. No, that's, that's okay. We're just about out of the end. The, uh, so, yeah, so, so we're, we're looking forward to a whole range of apps that are going to uh, already are changing our, our people's work. Uh, for example, our, our staff are coming up with their own ideas as well and giving them back to us. So we've yeah. got guys using Siri to, to fill in case notes and that sort of stuff. And it, it's the, and the, the wonderful thing is they're coming up with these ideas themselves. Right, yeah. I think, yes, when you enable people, they're going to find a way to make their job easier. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and they're, they're feeling empowered as a result and, and really buying into the whole uh, future way of working. So do you believe that mobile devices and apps improve productivity? About half of our audience say yes uh, significantly. Um, and, and uh, in fact, most believe that it's uh, a positive influence, which I think is very good. because, And honestly, I come at this from... Uh, an impartial background, being a technology lover, but knowing that it can it can cause trouble because God bless the speed and efficiency with which computers ruin our lives. You know, uh, sometimes it can. There are drawbacks, but it, it looks like people are at least on board, which is excellent. So let's run through now, um, uh, Brent, those four key pillars that we've got for the future ways of working. Absolutely. So we 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 uh, as we do in big corporations, we we try to put labels and brands and sort of uh, strategic pillars around things. Um, but we try to make it quite pra pragmatic. We talk about connect, communicate, collaborate, and innovate. Um, and as we step into the heart of what that actually means, when we talk about connecting, it's it's about creating that seamless and connectivity to the applications and, and business processes I need on the preferred device of my choice. Fundamentally, that really centers around our BYD strategy, around the staff plans that Jane talked about earlier. It's about giving people devices in their hands that are connected and able to be worked on. And we'll talk to the apps and some of the capabilities in, in, in a little bit. 
In the communicate side, really this is, this is very heavily centered around creating human connections. As I mentioned earlier, I think fundamentally organizations work in knowledge and they work through people. Um, so the communicate side is putting in place the types of technologies that do let us connect via video, that let us collaborate in real time through meetings, on documents, and actually work as teams. Um, and we're doing that through soft phone technology, through the use of technologies like WebEx, um, Jabba, uh, you mentioned the Polycom app. Uh, these are all capabilities that are available on tablets, on mobile devices, but even more so, we extend that into the workplace um, to let you dial into a video conference in an office, or frankly, on a laptop at home, at an airport, in a hotel, and if you really want to, you know, grab that uh, cafe latte and, and get from a cafe. Just make sure you've got a great headset on. But I think one of the um, concerns that people have in this aspect is that you're just going to make me work all the time. So how do we balance that life-work balance uh, while still giving freedom and the ability to connect from anywhere? Uh, it's, it's, it's a real challenge. I mean, we, we very much encourage, and part of the change approach as we roll these capabilities out is we make sure we reinforce the cultural behaviors we're trying to drive in Telstra. And it's simple things. We have a lot of people with an email signature that says, I'm sending you this email because it's convenient for me. I do not expect you to respond out of hours. Right. So there's a lot of those sorts of techniques that actually drive the culture of it's about personal choice. It's about what works for you. It's not an expectation that the organization is putting on you to work 24 by 7. Having said that, if you have to respond to something at 1 a.m. because you just chose to do so or there's a circumstance that requires it, you've got the capability to do that, or from the train on the way home. Right. Uh, so let's jump into that next pillar, which is the collaboration aspect. Collaborate gets down to, you talked about Google Drive, um, Box.com, uh, OneDrive. Fundamentally, we work with documents, we work with knowledge. Um, a large amount of businesses will, will work in, in knowledge management, um, is a very generic word around it. Um, and this is where we're seeing a lot of consumer capabilities coming into businesses. This is also where we're seeing a massive growth in software as a service, products like Office 365, Google Apps. You know, the consumer experiences that we love and, and use and the way our university students just grow up working, this is becoming the standard of how we expect to operate in a work environment. Um, you could be in a business of five people or in a business of 80,000. Fundamentally, we need ways to access those documents, to share those documents, to access approvals around workflows um, and documents and we need to be able to do that conveniently um, wherever I am. Mm -hmm. and that's the heart of the actual collaborate strategy. We also have a very, very strong focus around the use of internal social technologies. Um, you know, we use Yammer internally um, and it's baked into our Office 365 offering, but we have a huge amount of capability to have conversations across the whole company where traditionally those are emails that get fired off and, yeah. and it creates a lot of um, lack of productivity or productivity impacts because we suddenly have to CC in person X and person Y was missed out and suddenly we've lost the chain of conversation and you have to spend half an hour reading an email chain that was 40 responses long. Social technologies is one of the big ways that we break down those barriers, open up the organization and have that accessible again wherever I am. Well, let me uh, jump what into it. Oh, into go ahead, Brad. Sorry. I was just going to say, the, the, the big thing about all this, this is really foundational stuff. You know, I can connect, I can communicate, I can collaborate. The big change comes for us is when we use this to really change our business and, and put in the apps and the physical process changes that make it, as I said, drive revenue um, or reduce costs and let our people feel great about using the technology. And that's where the innovation comes in and the mobile ecosystem comes in. And one of the things I like about this is that we're not talking about necessarily driving revenue through this. It's just making your employees happier because they can do the things that may have taken forever before or had to call somebody in HR. They can do this all mm. you know, from wherever they are, when it's convenient for them, uh, and they're not necessarily tied to a nine-to-five schedule. Yeah, absolutely. And, we, and we've got some great examples uh, in, a, in a few minutes in terms of what that physically looks like. So we'll, we'll make it a little bit real for the audience in terms of what we've actually done um, as opposed to keeping it generic in concept. Yeah. So what about the different apps that are used in business? And we'll throw this back out to you in the audience. Uh, do you have apps that you've approved for business use? Uh, whether that be Google Drive or Box or uh, a variety of or perhaps a, a custom-made app, do you have one that is definitely used for your business and is the one that you encourage your employees to use? Uh, no, you don't. Or yes, but it's informal. So well, I guess everybody just uses Dropbox, so I guess we can use that. Or yes, we have a collaboration strategy in place. 
Uh, Mick, before you went down the journey to uh, incorporate uh, sort of a, a future ways of working strategy in your business, do you have a formal app or program arrangement? Uh, I'd say probably no. No, the uh, like uh, like all the challenges of CIOs, shadow IT is the is the big thing that uh, can come and trip us up in the background. So um, yeah, so we've certainly introduced a policy around exposing the shadow IT and actually having the conversations with people, and uh, but trying to trying not to restrict them from doing what they need to do, but working with them in, in collaboration to find that the best, most secure solutions that maintain our IP. So, um, so yeah, we, we we've now have a, a number of apps uh, which are suitable uh, for us to be able to work, and uh, and we're now managing those more effectively. Yeah, which is a very, very good point. Um, so we'll get into some of the, uh, the more specific apps that we're recommending here, uh, the ones that we've used internally and, and some of the ones that uh, Mick has used as well in just a moment. But first, um, uh, about 50% of our audience, they know they don't have approved apps in business. And I think that's, that's actually more common in uh, the real world, uh, in, you know, out there in business, just because nobody's really thought it through. Nobody's uh, said, okay, this is what is going to be our strategy. Uh, they're just accepting what has always been, uh, what somebody's found that they've found works for a specific task. Uh, so that actually doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, so let's talk about uh, some of the foundations of uh, actually having this strategy in place and what do we have to do uh, to, to not only get the technology in there, but get the apps and get the cultural change. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll center a little bit around some of the stats um, of the things that we have rolled out. And we've really been on the, uh, we've implemented uh, things over the last 12 months. So we're in the first leg of a fairly big business transformation journey. Um, but already we're seeing some great results. So at a most basic level, we've rolled out the um, what we call Staff Connect and Team Connect plans that Jane referred to earlier. Um, yeah, and we've had over 9,000 people take up devices um, as staff members, um, which is all of a sudden 9,000 new people connected to Telstra able to use mobile devices for work purposes. Um, out of that, the next uh, sort of part of that is our mobile device management, which is part of the ecosystem as to how we let them connect, but also make sure we don't compromise our information security, customer data, those sorts of things. Um, and this, on the ecosystem between the personal BYOD offerings and our actual formal, here's a, a phone as a Telstra staff member that you're allowed to use, um, we actually have 11,000 uh, individuals who are now using the mobile device management ecosystem with uh, just under, literally, I think we're 10 under 16,000 devices connected. And that's been in less than a 12 month uh, period, which is, which is quite overwhelming for us. Um, we've rolled out Wi-Fi to 53 buildings, which really is enabling us to that flexibility to work wherever I am in the office. And we've also put that in you know, the coffee shops in the foyers of our buildings. So we're, we're really encouraging the social aspects of being able to work where you want in the office but also work from home. Um, we've got a concept there of peer support. Now, that, that is a very simplistic way of, of, of saying we're letting the crowd, our internal staff and our contractors, the people using our systems, we're actually letting them very much support themselves. So things that would usually end up being a call to the IT department to go, I've got an issue, how do I do this? Or, hey, I'm trying to solve this problem, how can I do that? That's where the social technology side of supporting these systems um, has been incredibly uh, valuable. And you can see some of the stats there. We've got um, over 5,000 users and a huge amount of people getting problems solved. Um, and that's avoiding IT help desk. Yeah, it's actually taking real cost out. So we've rolled out enormous amount of new capabilities to Telstra with almost no cost increase for the IT support side of managing those users and those applications and systems. It's just a formalizing of what was before an informal process of you walking down the hall and talking to Jane or talking to Steve or talking to Bill who just knows how to do something. And here it's just Absolutely. Right that everybody can find it. Yeah. And, and the great thing about mobile devices is you find when, you know, think about your personal life. When you find that app that you love, be it Angry Birds or or uh, Snapchat, whatever it is, uh, you, know, you tell your friends about it, you tell your people about it, you're kind of proud that you're, you're a little bit tech savvy and, and, and this is something that's pretty cool that you'd like to share. We're seeing a lot of those behaviors come out as well in terms of, wow guys, did you know I just saved myself 12 hours of X um, by doing this. So the sharing that's helping the adoption is really, really powerful. And at the same time, if something breaks, you know, that's the first place we're encouraging people to go to get help. Um, and that's a learning evolution, but it's very much uh, it's very much how we're doing our customer support as well. 
the social channels when we talk about our mobile products and services are very active and huge, and we're bringing those same techniques into the organization. Mm -hmm. So I want to go around the room real quick, and uh, well, actually, uh, go ahead, uh, actually hit the business support first. Apologies. No, no problem. I think the other the other key thing is the uh, the use of video calls. So um, ultimately, you know, when when you think about meetings that you run, we we run conference conference calls, uh, conference telephone numbers, one eight hundred numbers that we actually dial to bring people together. Um, those are really really difficult meetings or conversations to have when there's more than two people on it. You know, generally you'll you'll be a fly on the wall or you'll try to interject and get interrupted. So we have heavily focused around video use and content sharing as a way to actually make sure we increase the quality of our meetings, the ability to drive effective decisions, the ability for people to be active and participating. And a simple thing, I can see your face, you can't be multitasking and doing your email at the same time because you're now on a screen in front of me, um, means we're getting much better quality of meetings. And we are literally seeing over 1,700 video calls a day. Um, and in fact, that's, that's probably about a month old and, and we're close to double that um, based on the measurements we did this week. So a huge amount of improvement is, is happening in the productivity of, of working in our office. So let's talk some of, about some of the more specific apps. And, and I love the productivity aspect of this, and I'm a big fan of the video calls. Whenever Fiona calls me and says, I, uh, here's what we're going to talk about, I have to pay attention to Fiona because uh, I see her, she's staring me down the entire time, which is a phenomenal thing. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about the apps. We've had a lot of questions come in uh, surrounding which apps are best. And obviously it's, it's tough to say because it depends on your specific business needs. However, if there were one app that you would say every business should have, and I'm going to ask each of you this, what is the number one app you would recommend? And uh, I'm going to start with you, Mick. Which one would you say is the number one app that every business needs to have? Well, I'm afraid I've just been totally sold on DocuSign. And uh, as, a, as an organization that historically has been intensively paper-based uh, for the last 20 years, to, uh, to have DocuSign and start rolling that out now, to be able to start connect, connecting that into our business systems is, uh, is a fantastic way forward. I've still got a way to go to push it out across the business, but uh, I can see that it's going to be a big, a big take up for us uh, and a big improvement in productivity. So Jane, what about you, what would be? Tip of the day. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, for me and what I've observed in our workplace, it's, it's the, uh, the cloud-based um, access to uh, documents to collaborate on and to share. Mm -hmm. Um, especially in our new working environment here in 400 George Street where we ha uh, are working more flexibly and people are, have less paper to store and less places to store it. So the access to documents on the go, wherever you are and to be able to collaborate for me. Uh, the key. To something like Box. Box.com. Yeah. Yep, it's something that we've, we've uh, started rolling out the organization um, and, and people are very excited and keen to jump on board with that. Yeah, what I actually like about it best is that you can keep more secure things in there because it's not just it's not just a digital storage place. It's, you know, gated. It's gated and it's a place to, you know, to collaborate and share. Yeah. All right, friends, what would be number one? I'm, uh, I, I find it really hard to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, I'll, I'll say that um, if you gave me three, I could choose call out three for you. Um, th the reason I find it hard is um, I'm, I'm probably a little bit of a geek and I'm a very early adopter of new technologies. Um, and I have the joy of rolling all this stuff out, so it's a very huge passion for me. But if, if I look at the, the top thing that I use currently that we've deployed, it's actually Jabba. It's about the video conversations, the meetings, and the nature of my work. I spend a lot of my day in meetings, driving outcomes through meetings, um, quite often in a coffee shop and quite often in the office. Um, but that ability to have that video conversation with uh, the workforce, with my team that is in multiple geographies, um, the Telstra workforce that is global and yeah. you know, in multiple geographies and buildings, um, but also I've got, I've got young kids, so the uh, flexibility to be able to work from home on that odd day when I need to attend the school function or uh, I've got a, you know, a trade who needs to come over to fix something in the house um, has changed the way I work significantly. Um, the second one is really centered around is what I, I agree completely with Jane, that ability to have my documents and my files and to be able to work with my teams uh, on those through Box and, and Office 365 is the other major player that we have internally um, is, is game changing in terms of how we work in our corporate lives. Excellent. Um, so let's jump into some of these collaboration tools that we're talking about here today and the ones that we're recommending to businesses um, outside of our personal favorites. Uh, the first one I think is, is uh, fairly straightforward because 
frankly, Microsoft Office is phenomenal. It is the standard. And every time I try to do something else just because I want I want to try the latest and greatest, I always default back because it's it's comfortable, it's familiar, and it's very easy to use. Yeah, absolutely. You hit the nail on the head. So, and I think the key part of this is it's not just about the uh, the latest Office um, tools on your desktop or your laptop. Office is now on mobile devices. You know, I can get that PowerPoint, that Word document. I can edit it in the same format as I do on my PC in the office, and I can access that on my mobile devices. So that's been a key part of what we've um, actually enabled across the organization recently. Um, the next sort of major part, and, and this is a little bit of how we're positioning it internally because we have got certain business decisions that we've made. Um, we have a huge amount of external parties and partners that we actually need to work with and collaborate with. And that's where we center around uh, DocuSign and Box as two of the major solutions that we are uh, have recently deployed. Um, so for those of you who don't know what DocuSign is, it is fundamentally a way of automating document-based approvals, signatures, um, so, for example, a lot of our contract work, we've rolled out DocuSign to our, our business salespeople. So a lot of the customer contracts that we're now signing will happen through DocuSign. So instead of printing out and, and uh, couriering huge amounts of paper, having a print out, sign, you know, rescan in a contract and then actually email that back to a customer, the whole process is completely automated on DocuSign um, and it can actually be approved on my mobile device using the DocuSign product with a, a legally binding digital signature. So the amount of productivity gain we see from that is enormous. Um, the customer advocacy we see, it, you know, it's just easier to deal with our customers in that sense. But we're also deploying that heavily internally um, in terms of our, our internal processes, uh, be it you know, contracts that we sign with external people, HR contracts, um, even, even simple things uh, such as um, uh, some of our legal uh, documents that we actually need signed and, and uh, authenticated, we're now using DocuSign for, and it's, it is really game changing. And a lot of what we've done there is is taken the easy stuff, anything that's currently a paper-based thing that needs a signature and approval on. Uh, we've automated um, a huge number of our internal business processes uh, within three months. Uh, it's, it's been a game changer. Um, Box is the other major major um, benefit that we are in that we have rolled out. We are currently in the early phases of it, but the uptake is just enormous. And again, it links into tools like DocuSign. I can access a contract. I can create a, a proposal using Box on my mobile device. I can edit it in Office on my tablet. I can save it in Box. I can load it up into DocuSign, and I can get it approved. Um, it's, it's a huge ecosystem, which is really, really enabling. Um, it also is just very pragmatic. I've got a cloud-based backup of my, my, my documents. I don't have to worry about my PC yeah. melting and losing information. It's always stored in the cloud. Mm -hmm. um, again, IT cost reduction and easier to manage in that sense. Yeah. So, Mick, when you're uh, trying to convince people in your office to abandon what has been the standard in industry for 20 years, what is the conversation? How do you, how do you even start that conversation? Well, I find waterboarding works pretty well as a, as a technique <laughs> to get them into. But, uh, so it's, I think it's a question of actually really sort of trying to sell them the benefits and, and understand what it means for them, as, as with any selling. It, it, you, you've actually got to show them how easy it is, demonstrate the, the ease with which it's done. Uh, and certainly these tools uh, are very intuitive. That There's no big learning to, to curve to pick them up and start using them. I think that's, that's one of the Historically, one of the biggest things that people are afraid of uh, when, when coming to these devices, it's always that I'm going to have to go on courses, I'm going to have to, to redo this. So, so an easy demonstration, uh, be able to demonstrate the, the, the viability, the benefits quickly and easily, um, and just let them go for it. Uh, let them play with it. Yeah. Uh, don't be too, too, too directive. Yeah, <laughs> here it is, just uh, figure it out um, without saying, here it is, figure it out. Right. Yeah. I, I think one of the other one of the other key sentiments that we're seeing through all of these new technologies is, um, you know, we, we talk a lot about change management, and it's very important as part of any of this to be very precise in how you're actually driving change and managing change. But one of the best ways to manage change is by giving them something that is intuitive, easy to understand, and is and is really needed. Um, we're not having to drive a lot of proactive uptake of these things. Um, because people are hearing about it and just going, I want it, I want to use it. It's, it's meeting very, very important and basic needs, um, w which is resonating very much internally. 
have right. well, these yeah. types of interviews out. Somebody on the cloud team signed me up for Box, and thus I'm more likely to use Box than if it comes down as a directive from someone on high who I don't know and who can't perhaps yeah. help me figure it out. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, let's run into the uh, productivity <laughs> aspect of the collaboration tools. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so DocuSign and Box are very much part of the ecosystem. Um, we're we're internally we're a, we're a really big Microsoft shop in terms of internal usage, as, as many many large corporations are. Um, so we are heavily focused around uh, Office 365 as well as one of the product sets that, that um, we are going to use internally, um, get benefits from internally. And the first phase launch, we're we're starting quite easily because it's a, we we have 80,000 people, 80,000 email boxes. Um, an enormous amount of documents that we generate um, on a weekly basis uh, that needs to be stored. So we are treading uh, in a journey here, but the first launch we basically deployed out OneDrive for business um, as well as OneNote. So very simplistically, OneDrive in many ways is, is a um, competitor to Box. You know, they do very similar things around having documents accessible across all my devices, being able to create you know, groups of people to share with. Um, the way we're positioning OneDrive internally is it's part of our enterprise tool of trade. Every single person in the company will get access to OneDrive as their file, my documents, and team sharing capability. And OneNote is just a great personal note-taking tool. You know, I, can, I can make notes. I can effectively reduce my use of paper-based note-taking and notebooks by using OneDrive. And of course, it's on my tablet, it's on my phone, it's on my desktop uh, when I get back into the office or my laptop. But I can also log in from the cloud at home and actually get access to those notes and share those notes. Um, so really powerful capabilities in that sense. And then we step into the real-time collaboration I, I talked about earlier, which is the interactivity side. Um, being a telco, we, we are, we are um, you know, this is a really big business for us. So we've chosen a multi-vendor strategy um, in this case, which may or may not be appropriate for smaller, um, for smaller businesses. However, the thing that we've done is we've made it all work together. So it doesn't matter who you're trying to communicate with, what technology you're using, we're really making these technologies interoperate um, as far as how we're using them internally. So we've just rolled out Jabber as a new standard for telephony um, and George Street, uh, the 400 George Street, which is our Sydney-based head office for Telstra, um, is using Jabber as a standard. Um, now, very precisely, that's not a physical phone. It is a app on a mobile device, and it's a piece of software running on your Windows laptop um, and that is the standard telephony that we're using which means every call that you make in Telstra as a person that we've actually put into the new future ways of working in George Street um, is a video enabled call, is able to receive content, um, is able to have multiple screens so I can see faces as well as content and, and I can see that in very good definition um, but I can do the same when I go at home on my, on my iPad or my Android tablet which is great. So basically um, Star Trek is finally a, here. <laughs> it's it's uh, in some ways it's so much more advanced. Um, we just need to be able to beam people up, and we'll get it. <laughs> um, and of course, we have a we have a, an offering called Tippet, which again is a, a great telephony and video platform. And with the Microsoft lens, uh, we are rolling out Link, which really is about that ability to send instant messages, create instantaneous meetings, and collaborate on meetings. Um, and we're in the process of actually upgrading from Office Communicator to Link. Um, so I uh, would we'll be looking forward to sharing the learnings of that journey over the next 12 months. So the key question is, how did we go about this? Because this is this is really big. Um, you know, we've as I mentioned earlier, we've got 16,000 devices, 11,000 people. Um, so the foundations that we set up in the first instance was one focusing on our policy around bring your own device. Um, and obviously we've talked about that, so I won't labor that in too much detail, but the big challenges there is, um, you know, are you going to remunerate your people? What are you going to let them have access to? Are you going to let them, uh, you know, you, you might want to access a gambling site which you may not encourage in your, uh, in your workforce or do something inappropriate on that device. How do you manage those sorts of scenarios from an HR perspective when it's a person's personal device that they're using for work? So a lot of consideration went into that, and those are some of the decisions that each organization will need to go through in their own right. Um, we took a very simple simple term around this. It is a personal device. What you do in your personal life is, is yours to manage. Just don't do stuff that's illegal. Um, but we will implement a mobile device management suite, which effectively lets us um, apply a level of corporate control, not too intrusive, but a level. So we can actually configure your email and your calendar. We can configure the actual app store that lets you get components down to your device. 
And we're very much doing that using a combination of AirWatch as the mobile device management provider um, and a tool uh, product called Kony, which is, is really a, uh, an app development platform and a management platform to, to let you manage your devices and actually deploy devices. So very simple things such as my iPhone got stolen and I've got Box and Office 365 and, and all my corporate documents on that. Um, you know, through mobile device management, we can wipe the corporate contact uh, information on that device as soon as it actually connects to the internet. We can lock it out from access in the intranet because we have mobile device management, but it also provides that ecosystem to deploy our capabilities. So the most basic need, obviously, that's how we get email and calendar out to every device, personal or, or Telstra provided. Um, that's just a one-on-one -on -one foundation capability. As we step on from the email and calendar scenario, effectively the next part of that journey is giving access to business systems and information. So we have enabled a full um, VPN connectivity using a two-factor authentication experience um, to easily connect into the intranet uh, of our organization. So we're getting value without even building apps and using apps. We're already enabling people to get onto the intranet, access business systems. Um, obviously those business systems need to be able to work on a mobile device browser, but there's value being created there. The next major step for us was access to basic documents and collaboration tools, which we talked about in the previous session. Um, and now we're starting to step into the advanced needs and solutions like Box and Office 365, which again, you note I talked about cloud first and software as a service. There's not a single IT built system that I've talked about which will require boxes to be stood up and infrastructure to be stood up. These are as a service products that will always be maintained and updated and we will get new features deployed to our workforce as a result. Then the exciting stuff came. So we've deployed out, um, using the AirWatch product, we've actually deployed out an internal app store. So this is an app store that you access on your device, very similar to Google Play or the iTunes app store, Apple app store, um, on people's devices through mobile device management. This gives every single employee a very easy way to find out what are the apps that are actually available in my organization, that are endorsed by my organization. Um, so I can download them, get updates, I can rate them and tell people what I think. You know, that one was terrible, one star, we really need to change the business process here. Or oh, wow, that's been fantastic, you've just changed my life and I'm getting great results for my uh, particular business. And we're starting to deploy out a huge number of applications um, into that space, um, you know, which centers around DocuSigns being one of the key ones that I mentioned earlier, really changing the game in how we manage paper contracts and approvals around those, those paper-based processes. Um, Office 365 and, and Box is ways to get my documents and share and collaborate around our documents. Um, I've talked about Jabba. Um, the other two sort of major players that we, we are deploying and, and are getting really good results on is, uh, number one is a product called Canvas, which is really a, a way of automating forms. So taking things and making simple forms with processes behind those forms. Um, some examples of that um, are field technicians, so people that come to your houses to plug in your broadband uh, cable or have a look at your, uh, your modem if you're having any issues there. Um, sometimes they actually need to take orders and process orders. Canvas has given them a way to do that on their app, capture some details, send it into an approval process or workflow process to automate a business outcome. Uh, Brent, I had a very good lost? question coming from the audience, and it, it, rel it, it relates to that, um, and, and that's on data jurisdiction. It comes in from Liam. What sort of uh, due diligence have you done to make sure that, you know, the pictures of my baby are safe and not, you know, going to be used by the company, and, and a variety of other issues, but, you know, who owns what on this phone that is seemingly owned by everybody? Absolutely. Uh, this is the, the number one question of BYOD policies, absolutely. So we, we did a, a lot of work there. Um, which ranged from interviewing our actual employees. So we actually spent a lot of time going, how would you feel about this scenario? What's important to you on the device? Um, so at a basic level, what the policy we've implemented is what you own, you own. So we will never touch your personal content <coughs> on your device. Um, we are saying if you decide to bring your own device, in certain circumstances, there are gonna be um, times you know, through theft of device or if we detect that something has happened, so there's been an event, maybe there was a highly secure document that got leaked and we've managed to narrow it down to your device, we will wipe your device. So part of our change management is, how do you manage your personal content, which is really you know, one-on-one personal stuff, you should be doing it already. You know, back up your photos, back up your phone, 
um, make sure we can restore it, but Telstra will not, if we can avoid it, touch your personal content. That's very good to know. So smaller businesses, it sounds like it's uh, a conversation with the employees, number one. You know, know what they need, what they want. And number two is to just come and have a conversation with someone who can be that provider who can tell you what your options are. Absolutely. And then it does come down to education and choice. Some people may choose not to bring their own device. Yeah. They may say, I'm, I'm actually not willing to. But most of the time, the gain that people see from doing that, in our experience so far, far outweighs any concerns. And mostly it is it's concerns, it's not reality or facts yeah. around things that could go wrong with their personal information. So I'm, uh, while we're uh, talking, I just have a couple of other questions that have come in from the audience. I'm going to uh, let you and the audience also see some of these slides, but we're running low on time. So another question that comes in from Brad, which is, how do you manage the liability for, that, for the loss of damage? You know, uh, I'm responsible maybe up front for costs, but or we split costs. That phone gets stolen. Uh, it gets dropped and run over by the car. Who's in charge? Who do we go to? Um, how do we handle that? Yeah, so um, that, that's a great question. I think this is going to be different for every single business, um, depending on your, your choice of how you implement BYD. Um, what, what Telstra has done here, as we said, we've enabled a Staff Connect plan, and there are certain insurances that come as part of those products, very similar to any consumer product that you get from Telstra and many of the other telcos. You can get an element of insurance around the device loss and breakage. What we're very conscious, though, is if we're mandating that this is the way that you have to work, and there are certain types of employees where that is the case, that's where we've made decisions to say Telstra will give you a physical phone and be responsible for the replacement of that phone in damage or loss. Um, our field technicians is a great example. They cannot do their jobs without a mobile device. Right. For a lot of our office workers, it's a really nice to have, but really they've, they've been given phones and they're at a laptop. So that does come down to some choice of, are you willing to invest, um, or is BYD your strategy? One of the techniques that is actually maintained there quite broadly across the industry is the company gives you a small, almost a, a um, what's the language, a stipend. We, we give you a little bit of cash that you can use for the purchase of your device as a way to say you are then responsible to make sure that you have got liability in place for the device. So, Mick, and I'll give you the, the last say on this. Is this uh, where do you start as a business owner in, in having this conversation with your employees, or do you uh, do you just have a, just say this is this is happening? Uh, no, we, we actually did uh, engage our uh, HR department quite extensively. Uh, we've got uh, existing working policies that needed to be modified to accommodate this sort of service. Uh, on the question of li liability, uh, we self we self insure. We we, did, we find that that's cheaper than than going to external insurance and uh, so far we actually find that the the failure rate the damage rate is actually far less than when we had uh, staff looking after what was perceived as being uh, company owned, owned equipment so um, and there is a there is a penalty where people are considered to be negligent uh, it's about a hundred dollars first time round. so there's a, there's a bit of a, an excess that they pay and uh, so far it's working well uh, yeah, we've had a couple of uh, couple drive-through floods, and uh, they're not waterproof, so <laughs> uh, we do get losses, but crack screens, that sort of But it's far less than we used to have. Right, that's interesting to know. Uh, so there's a lot of information here in the pack that we haven't gone into in depth, and I do recommend that you uh, download it. You can see it in the resources tab now, uh, and you can uh, delve into some of the ideas of uh, the efficiencies and the cost savings and uh, the, the the straight up money that you can save, which I don't want to belabor, but is not insubstantial, especially when you look at this in, in longer terms. But uh, we've had a, a, a lot that we've covered here today. So I want to take you in the audience, I take a second for you in the audience to say thank you for uh, joining us here today. One last question. What do you believe is the most important aspect of instituting a major technology change in your business? Uh, go ahead and give me an answer there. Uh, while I uh, say thank you to all of our guests here on the line today, uh, uh, Brent Selfie from uh, Telstra, Jane Gordon uh, also from Telstra, and Mick Havel from Wise Employment. Uh, you can find out information about them in the speaker bios there on your player console. Uh, in just a moment, you will see a little uh, survey pop up. Let us know how we did, uh, what you found interesting, and what you'd like to hear more of in the future. Uh, I'm your host, Justin Cleveland, saying thank you for joining us for this Telstra virtual event. <laughs>